there's a, 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 a randomized trial called Forward. What? Forward um, one. Forward You're one. You're the PI of that too, right? Forward one of that <laughs> one. Tell, okay. us, tell us the forward <laughs> one study. There's love here. <laughs> tell us what it is and what the design of the study is. Okay, so um, forward one is a randomized phase three trial that um, is in patients with one to three priors, platinum resistant disease, and they have had uh, their tissue sent, usually archival tissue, uh, for immunohistochemical testing of folate receptor alpha, and they have to have uh, moderate to high staining. And folate receptor alpha is really robustly expressed on ovarian cancer surfaces um, about 75 to 80% of the time, but about 65% of the time it's moderate to high. Why does that matter? Well, we actually don't know why it matters, to be honest. We don't know what it's doing there. It's not the normal folate metabolism, mm -hmm. but it's there, and it's not really on normal tissues. And so what the drug is in forward one is a drug called mervatuximab soriftanzine, and this is an antibody drug conjugate. There you go. And so an antibody drug conjugate in general, it looks like an arrow. That's how I picture it. And the head of the arrow is targeted to something that hopefully is tumor specific. It has a beautiful linker that keeps it all together in circulation. And then the tail of the arrow has um, highly potent molecules of chemotherapy, not PLD or taxanes. They have bizarre names, but they tend to be microtubule toxins or yeah novel alkylating agents. Made by the same company that brought us TDM1, by the way. Yes. So yeah. the, these yeah. guys, right, have right, some right, experience. Right. But there's quite yeah. a few of these in development. So they're on the tail. They hit the folate receptor alpha. The cell thinks oh, yeah. it's a friend, lets it in like a Trojan horse, and you release the molecules of chemo, right. and it takes out the cell, we hope. Um, and the molecule on the tail is what's called DM4, which is a, um, a, a metanzine microtubule toxin. So in phase one, expansion, co expansion um, um, cohorts, the response rate in the same forward one population, one to three priors, et cetera, was um, 47% Pretty high. with yeah. a seven month median PFS. And so forward one is comparing that drug, which is given every three weeks IV to physician's choice chemotherapy um, with a PFS end point. I like it. Yeah. What, what I think is interesting that you were able to show that there's a correlation with, with, between the level of folate receptor expression and those that have none, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. opposed to those that have intermediate or high, right. and that you really base your criteria of study entry on that intermediate to high, because mm -hmm. that's, I think, where you get more drug delivery. Right. So it's really a, a, a targeted drug delivery of a very potent chemotherapy now. Right, and I want to give a lot of credit to you, to the investigators that worked on this program because, you know, there was a dosing issue, there was a toxicity issue. Eye issues. We worked it all out. Right, and, and, and they, mm -hmm. uh, I think, did a very good job of taking a relatively small database to try to to fashion this that would put it in a position to win in the right patient population. So it's a good Can, can it's you comment effort. on the side effects? Because I've had preliminary experiences with patients and I'm surprised how well they tolerate it. Yeah. I mean, it, it and uh, very different to a patient that would expect a third or fourth line of chemotherapy. Right. And they have access to this drug now. Right. So patients um, mm -hmm. really do, mm -hmm. do well on this drug. Um, it, you know, it has a microtubule toxin, but you don't see hair loss. Mm -hmm. You do see some worsening of neuropathy, but it tends to be low grade and nowhere near like paclitaxel. Mm -hmm. We see diarrhea as the most common toxicity, mm -hmm. but we tell patients about it and they're set up for success. Yeah. They have, they just start their own emodium. The biggest thing with the, um, this antibody drug conjugate, and actually is a class effect of a number of antibody drug conjugates mm -hmm. with particular cytotoxins is um, keratopathy. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you get damage to the, um, the stem cells around the cornea, the limbus, mm -hmm. and they kind of fleck off and go centrally, and so patients come in cycle two with some blurry vision. Yeah. And if you do a slit lamp, you find all these microcysts, mm -hmm. um, which is 100% reversible. It's just like a burn on your skin. It mm -hmm. heals, mm -hmm. and the patients are fine. And so we, that was the toxicity you're referring to. We yeah. really worked through that. Um, we used to dose reduce quickly, and that uh, got yeah. rid of it, of course. But now if it's, we do eye drops, um, mm -hmm. if they are visually grade one, mm -hmm. the patient's like, yeah, I'm okay, I'm still working. Mm -hmm. We keep treating, yeah. we're not dropping the dose as quickly, mm -hmm. so we're maintaining dose intensity better. Um, but patients really like, mm -hmm. yeah. like being on this class of drug and this drug in particular. With, yeah. with, with your indulgence, I wanna talk about another molecule that, that we work on, it's something that I've, I've been passionate about. Um, I think we, we've spent a lot of time talking about anti-angiogenesis new vasculature that's developing, but we have the opportunity to target existing vasculature, and that class of agents is called a vascular disrupting agent. And so the idea would be to give a vascular disrupting agent 
destroy, collapse the existing vasculature and then give an anti-angiogenesis drug so they can't grow back. And so in a randomized phase two trial, that was uh, uh, important to improve PFS and response rate. And, and that the agent is CA4P, combratostatin, or phosphoridibulin. I call it CA4P. So now there's a, a, a randomized trial taking platinum-resistant recurrent ovarian cancer, chemotherapy, bevacizumab, all of the Aurelia trial, and then adding the vascular disrupting agent CA4P. So hopefully we can, again, try to capitalize on the wonderful observation uh, that Eric Pujada Lorraine mm -hmm. made again in the Aurelia trial by giving further anti-vascular agents one that destroys existing yeah. vascular. This is a, this is a concept I, I, I like a lot only because the the ovarian cancer environment is a mixture of neoangiogenesis, you know, kind of like. Uh, uh, immature blood vasculature right. and mature vasculature, which is not all that sensitive to anti-VEGF therapy. So you're taking an endothelial cell toxin that's, that's banking on uh, uh, genetic stability, which we see in endothelial cells, and going after that as a target causing a hypoxic environment, which is natural responses to Increase VEGF. Yep. It's and now we're coming back in with things. But you have to be careful because it's a high risk investment, maybe high gain, if ovarian cancer is different because these drugs of vascular disrupting agents haven't really held their promise in other agents. This agents. is the only one. Th no right? doubt about it. No yeah. doubt about it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you're right, there are multiple classes of yeah. EDAs that, yeah. that are out there. So, Matt, in summary, so we've talked about genetic testing, we've talked about surgical trials, which is pretty rare, we've talked about recent approvals, angiogenesis, uh, immunotherapy. What, what are you most excited about in the near future in ovarian cancer? Well, I think it's, again, an exciting time. You sit down with a patient that's recently diagnosed with ovarian cancer before you kind of give her her survival based on what we were doing 10 years ago. Right. We really think we're at a point where we're moving forward and have more <laughs> things to offer and much smarter molecular drive therapy. To your point, we need it correlate this much better than just saying, oh, I think this is the right method. We need to actually have that documented. But it's a very exciting time to be taking care of patients with ovarian cancer, and there's a lot of hope for them. That's right. I agree. Well, I want to thank you that have participated uh, in uh, this uh, Onc Live peer exchange. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Coleman, Dr. Powell, Dr. Moore, and Dr. Ganeshti <laughs> Godfrey, my good friend, uh, who's really Czech, but he says he's German, uh, who lives on the beach in, in Southern California. Uh, but thank you for your time. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, your engagement, and so long for now.